David Zeritsky from the Bond Experience. Joe Darlington from Being James Bond. And we are back. We are. And uh, there's a few less people after our last one on View to a Kill. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Sorry. <laughs> now you're seeing like the maniacal mean side. A right. little bit. You were. You actually. You liked Vito a Kill better than I did. I, I did. Yeah. I'm a. Little, I, I'm a little soft on that one. Yeah. I can understand <laughs> that. But we have to move on. Mm -hmm. And we are now at Timothy Dalton's last. And just just to remind everybody of the theory. Yep. The theory is that the each Bond actors their last Bond film was perhaps their weakest. Their low note. They're low note. Not mm -hmm. their swan song. No. Their uh. Their uh, yeah. Their <laughs> goose egg song. Yeah. Um, but we wanted to test that out. Joe and I took the time. We do these things for you, not for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we watched all of the last Bond films, and now we're going to talk about them. Yeah. And so we have behind us, um, with all the accoutrements, License to Kill. Timothy Dalton's License to Kill. Yep. And Joe, we're going to start with you this time. Yeah. What'd you think? Uh, License to Kill. This is funny. You know, this is one that I've actually spent a lot of time. I did actually a pretty... I mean, it's actually funny. I'm in the process of sort of reworking uh, a very long retrospective that I did on this film. And uh, so, yeah, I oh, kind of feel like it's fresh. The, just like the back of my hand, this one. And yeah, it's a swing and a miss. Hmm. Uh, and I and it's frustrating because, boy, is Timothy Dalton a great James Bond. Yes. Only had the chance to do two. He did one that, in my opinion, is is outstanding. I really, I really like *The Living Daylights*, and I feel like it's an, an, a very underrated classic Bond film. And then they decide, uh, let's do *Miami Vice* meets *Scarface* meets anything not James Bond, and stick James Bond in it and see see what happens. And you get *License to Kill*. And uh, it's yeah, not one of my favorites. Um, there's worse, not saying it's the worst Bond film ever, but boy is it disappointing because again, you had Timothy Dalton who was born to play James Bond and in in Living Daylights, they took a guy. Now, I think Timothy Dalton was the one that they were probably nervous about because again, they wanted Brosnan because he was Remington Steele. He's, yeah. he's a guy that audiences will, will gravitate towards. Yeah. Then you got Timothy Dalton. Who, you know, this this hardcore, I do Shakespeare, I do serious acting, and, yeah. and he's got a very gruff exterior. But they softened him up just right for The Living Daylights. Yes. They made him very personable, even the way his Lots hair is done. smiling, like ability. Yeah. yeah. Very easy, very easy going, in fact. Um, then they they say, well, we have this hardcore guy, we should make him hard harder core Let's, uh, yeah, so let's slick his hair back, make him just serious and dour all the time. Yeah. And, and completely unlikable, and even have him do things that, that don't make a lot of sense. Um, and again, in a story that looks more suited for Miami Vice than for Bond. Um, so, my initial thoughts, not so good. Yeah, so, um, this may surprise you. I think oh boy, they, they here were, we go. Just a day of surprises. <laughs> so, um, this one, after another viewing, uh, warmed on me a little bit. And I'll tell you what it was. Mm -hmm. um, I used to look back, and by the way, I used to look back on Timothy Dalton's tenure mm. in general as, ugh, you know, Timothy Dalton. Um, not as a person or as an actor. He's, he's a good actor, and I think he always, in my mind, played a formidable Ian Fleming type Bond. Very literary yeah. Yeah. You know, type Bond, which I, I, I like. Yeah. But now that I'm 51 and I've grown a little bit, and I've, I've gotten used to Daniel Craig, now I appreciate Dan um, Timothy Dalton more. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate the hard hitting. This film for me had a lot of things going for it that I forgot. Mm. Had so many things going for it. I will I will start with um, a pretty simple one. Um, number one, it's it's Bond disguising himself and mm. becoming somebody else. So it's that whole thing of infiltration. Yeah. You don't see a lot of infiltration bonds. True. Um, yeah. Ones that at least work successfully. This one does. Yeah. Bond is really smart and conniving. I mean, his line with Sanchez, when he's sitting there and he goes, oh, you know, you're a problem solver. And he goes more of a problem eliminator. Mm -hmm. I love that line. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that gives me goosebumps. Yeah. I'm like... You know, and that's what I love about the good James Bond moments. Bond is so capable and quick-witted. Yeah. And he yeah. thinks on his feet. And this is Timothy Bal Dalton's Bond thinking on his feet mm. at all times. I also like Sanchez. 
I think Sanchez has yes. the right amount of maniacal. He's surrounded by some pretty weak characters. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can get into, you know, all the ancillary, you know, quote unquote yeah. henchmen type thing yeah. um, that are that are sort of weaker. But he is a really strong bad guy mm -hmm. who almost makes me feel like when I'm watching the series Narcos. Yeah. I think he, he really served that up well. I what agree. did you think of him as a bad guy? I think Sanchez is great. I think he is easily one of the better Bond villains for sure. Uh, and I remember them talking about how, uh, you know, Bond and the villain should be sort of mirror images. And I think that's something they hit on very nicely here. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think he is a great villain for sure. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. The, the, the minions are, wow, are they bland. Bland. Yeah. Forgettable. For sure. In fact, um, even as I was just talking, though, I just saw the film, mm -hmm. I actually had a scramble in my head, like, who are they? Yeah. You know, yeah. you got Cress, you know, you got some of these other guys, you got the accountant, you know, who's like, you know, wow, I can't believe they went yeah. for it. He's like this squeaky little character. Wow, is he? Yeah. You got Wayne Newton. What the hell's he doing <laughs> in the movie? <laughs> Bless your heart. Bless your yeah. heart. See, that, that part actually kind of grew on me a little bit because, again, when I first saw it, this was this was the late 80s when, when the televangelist was, oh. was sort of a big thing nice and all those little, scandals yeah. were, were so prevalent. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of felt like this was kind of a throwaway to that, but really out of place in a Bond movie. Yes. Um, in retrospect, though, it kind of doesn't bother me like it used to, though. Well, I will tell you, in, in this film in particular... Um, the action scenes are really good. Now, behind me, I don't know if the camera's picking it up. You see a lot of diving equipment and things like that. Mm. The scene where Bond, you know, like rips up the cocaine in the water and then yeah. shoots the plane and yes. then starts to jet ski or, yeah. or water ski right. on his feet and then grabs yes. the plane and then throws the money out the window. Yeah. Uh, and then the guy, I mean, to me, this film had many more of those type of moments than I actually remembered. Mm. The... Bond going rogue thing, I thought, and you and I have been to Key West, so we have a lot of heart for that yeah. location and environment. I thought it was well done enough. I almost, it was interesting because Daniel Craig's Bond has gone rogue so much. Yeah. I'm like, rogue again? And I'm like, well, actually, no, that was one of the first times he kind of went rogue. Right. In a yeah, movie this, was, this was, not only was it a novelty back then, but it was sort of, it was jarring. Jarring. Like, do I like this? Do this, I like the, the idea? Country of, Club 007? Yeah. So yeah, it, it, that sort of broke broke the mold a little bit, and yeah. it was kind of like I'm not sure if I like this. Now it's so overdone. Yes, you know. Um, so another thing that I liked, I'll keep the I'll keep the happy stuff, and then we'll yeah. get into the grizzle. Um, <laughs> Pam Bouvier, I liked her. I liked her as a Bond girl. And I'll tell you why. Okay. Um, you know, there's this one part in uh, in the um, in the bar where you know she goes, "He's with me," you know, yeah. like. She, I just liked her as this kind of, I know she was with the CIA, you don't know who she's with, mm -hmm. and she's got these like really great strong moments. I don't also don't think she was the quintessential, you know, beauty bond. You know, she yeah. had short hair, yeah, yeah. she was kind of tomboyish, rough mm -hmm. and tumble, almost like a Camille-like character, mm -hmm. which, I don't know, I, I tended to gravitate yeah. to. Um, I, I hear what you're saying, and honestly... Yeah, I disagree. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> it, it, but I don't disagree in theory because I sort of like the, the idea of her, and I like it on paper. Uh, I don't know that the delivery the execution works. wasn't. Yeah, okay. I kind of find that she. I don't know. She was. So, she's a fine actress, and I'm, I know she's been in a lot of other things. Yeah. Uh, I've always felt that she was kind of bland, and her delivery is just a little awkward. Yeah. Yeah. And again, like you said, when you first meet her, she's got the kind of librarian hair. Um, and then later gets cut to the short version, which yeah. is sort of like this kind of big deal in the movie, but I'm kind of like, yeah, so what? Um, but I don't know. I kind of, I always sort of felt like her delivery is a little weird. And then later, of course, when Lupe kind of comes in and she goes, oh, I love James so much. And she, I love James so much. I'll be damned if I'll help him. Ooh, that little skunk. Like, like now suddenly she's, she's all jealous, like a JV cheerleader and somebody looked at her man funny, like, yeah. But maybe so, that's why she did appear better to me in in kind of the ability from an execution because lupe is so bad and um uh felix's wife oh my gosh what's her name dahlia 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 Della, yeah. Della. Della. honestly she does so bad she was better in three's company she she just does not do it it's like <laughs> hi james and then she did the same acting job she did when she was dead it's like 
Isn't that funny? You know, I always, I've always looked at that and said, why would you get somebody from Three's Company to, to play this part? Because again, Come she's supposed to be. Yeah, right. I mean, she's the catalyst. She's the she's the thing. When when she's yes. dead, Bond breaks and needs to go out for revenge. You know, I think it's even more yeah. because of the dead wife than it actually is about Felix getting maimed. You know. Yeah. And and, and so why would you bring in somebody from a lighthearted '70s comedy? Um, for that, and and yeah, it's jarring. Not to mention, I've always watched that and and said like, I I find the relationship with Bond and Della to be really inappropriate. <laughs> There's Wait, a lot of like kissing in that. Some heavy kissing. <laughs> The, the, like yeah. Bond and her are kissing yeah. much more than Felix and the wife are kissing. Yeah. Like I mean, it, I mean, she's like all over him. I mean, it, you almost get this uncomfortableness, and I kind of wonder if this is maybe a little intentional because Bond is supposed to be the, the 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 leading man, the hero of the film. She looks as if she's got that Felix is the consolation prize because she can't get her hooks in James Bond. Well, all right, so let's <laughs> let's talk about something because there is something I walked away with which I I couldn't get over, and that is the treatment of. Bond to Felix and and I guess obviously Felix's wife mm. was just really bad in this film. You know, I feel like and 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 David Elson, um, he's he's a good actor. I've seen sure. him in some good stuff. He's obviously been in Bond before, mm -hmm. um, but his delivery of these lines were so stilted. And then in the end, in the hospital room, his wife just Oof. died a couple days before. And what does he do? Hey, James. Hey, 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 let's go fishing. There he is, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Come on, let's cast him. Em's oh got a job gosh. for you. No repercussions from this whatsoever. So come on back when you're Guys. ready. Guys. And I don't know if it was a, let's call it on direction or writing or, you know, I hate to blame it just on the actors, but to me, especially as a, an older person watching good films nowadays, mm. it was jarring to see how poorly that was done oh yeah and i mean not only that i don't think it's an accident i don't think it's it's just a coincidence that they show an attractive nurse fluffing up his pillows right as he's on the phone and he can't oh, you, I, 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 I i absolutely feel that there was sort of supposed to be like an undercurrent of you know he's moving on yeah but it's like boy this is days old like can, like can can the body get cold before he moves on to the next one yeah i i, I agree <laughs> and you know i think it stands out to me in such a negative way because you do have relationships that are treated very well. I thought Q and Bond, this is some of the best Q and Bond relationship in any of the Bond films. I think the whole, first of all, I love Q out in the field. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it highlighted Desmond Llewellyn. Yes, there were funny moments and things like that. Yes, there were some campy disguises. But the whole thing between Bond and Q, Timothy Dalton, who I think gets a lot of smashing because he's so serious, really played against Bond, almost like Brosnan mm. and Desmond Llewellyn did. Kind of that, like, you know, oh, you know, I know you're, you're mad at me. Well, yeah, I'm mad at you, uh, but, you know, I love you too. And yeah. I, I love the treatment of this and and some of those things. I, I'm gonna wildly disagree with you there. <laughs> yes. Not only do it makes I it so much more interesting. <laughs> not only do I not like how <laughs> Q is in this film. Yeah. Honestly, I I just find it to be a borderline betrayal in, in terms of you have this character Q who is for years such a fuddy duddy right. who says I don't like equipping you in the field. This is highly irregular. Like he doesn't even like to leave the house and right. and and you know and him and Bond have this kind of, you know, playful but adversarial relationship. Now suddenly, Bond quits, goes rogue, goes on a murderous rampage of revenge to, to murder somebody, and Q's like, I got some vacation time. Why not? Just, oh, I'll go on vacation. I'll go follow Bond, show up wherever he goes. So it's his motivation. Make it's his motivation. Yeah. So, right. And, and, and by the way, here's some guns to help you kill this guy and not get caught. And, and by the way, the gadgets, I, I kind of feel, are weird. The, the camera you know, gun. Like Dentonite exploding toothpaste? Well, yeah, there you oh. go. Right, now we're getting into wacky packages territory. Um, but yeah, so he has the signature gun, which again shows up again at Skyfall. Interesting little side note. But he's got the signature gun so that when the ninjas come to shoot him, they can't kill him. But then when the British agent shows up, they pop the gun in his hand. Okay, we know exactly who you are, exactly yeah. where you got this, and and well, okay, that didn't work out as well as I thought it was gonna. So, so the Lark cigarettes uh, that uh, with the that beeping light lights and, and like everything, that? yeah, it doesn't really doesn't. Oh, <laughs> loved it. I I, I find it very good. cartoony and comic booky the, the gadgets here, but uh, and again, I, clearly Q was polarizing in this movie. Yeah, Either I mean, loved it or hated it. I mean, it, but the, and the, it's I'm torn yeah. because I do. I mean. I love Desmond Llewellyn, and I love seeing him get more screen time, and I like when he's in the field 
a better example would be Octopussy, where he shows up at the end. But it's almost like kind of a reluctant. He has to join the fight because yes. the last the, his sidekick got killed before, so I got to help out. Yes. Um, again, here it just feels so gratuitous that, that he would just sort of take it upon himself to go on this little fun rampage revenge. That, again, he could get fired if they found out that he's there. Um, so I, I just kind of like very... our, our Q inspector when he went to Austria. Well, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, right, right. In in that case, in, Inspector Q goes to follow Bond because he's covering his tracks. He's cover, you know, he already kind of gave Bond yes. like a little too much help before. Yeah. I got to make sure you don't cause too much trouble and get me fired. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he actually comes out and says, like, it wasn't you know, just like I love you. I want to help. You. Right. This is just like this in in License to Kill. I was bored. I figured I'd come help you murder Sanchez. Yeah. Why not? You have some very valid points. I get it. Uh, <laughs> sound soundtrack score. What'd you think? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, again. again that I Michael came in ni 80s, 90s uh, action. It was a thing. So to me, that, why not? That actually helped the support of the argument that this feels like a Miami Vice movie. Yeah. Um, I thought the look of the film and mm. the soundtrack did not add to the amazingly robust, beautiful, yeah. typical look of a Bond film. I agree. Yeah. It 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 does it doesn't have that kind of majesty that a lot of the films have it does seem like we're gonna we're gonna throw that away for a little while and kind of get into miami vice territory i mean like right the soundtrack he, this guy had done die hard lethal weapon yeah so that style was very evident so when you see it in a bond movie it it feels like they're just chasing the trends yes. you know of the time and, and not really being faithful to themselves honeymoon don't worry we gave her a nice honeymoon. We gave her a nice honeymoon. What did you think of him? <laughs> He's, boy, he, you know, it's so funny that of all the people in this film, Benicio Del Toro. Toro sounds like a load of bull. Went on to be like one of the biggest actors. I know, you know? Sicario, my But gosh. when you watch him in this, it's like he went to cre creepy school, you know, and, and like the the part where, just, just watch his when he's face. he's sweating and glaring. And he's oh like, my God. Just watch the part after the after the bar fight and he shoots Pam Bouvier or he thinks he killed her or whatever. Yeah. And then they cut back to his face and he, he has like the biggest, widest Grin. smile that he yeah. can get like out of his face. Dark, yeah. I mean, he looks like the Joker. <laughs> so he's purposely trying to be as Looney Tunes crazy as he possibly can. Yeah. Uh, it's a little, it's a little weird. It's jarring, back, but yeah, it's jarring. Um, and and again, you know, okay, but do I want my henchman to be okay like the other ones? You know, yeah. he had his secretary, he had the accountant, he had Cress. Yeah, he, he was Sanchez was surrounded by all these meh, yeah, meh, big time kind of characters that really just yeah. didn't serve any role. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. He they they're all very kind of this wishy washy vanilla ish group of guys um at least dario you can make the case that he's a little has a little more character and seems like somebody who would sanchez would have yeah. as opposed to the other guys who are just kind of like these kind of stock actors you know just sitting around doing nothing what did you think of the uh miss money penny money penny has like scarcely a part i think her her scene is 30 seconds long oh wow where he comes out and says you know there's typos on this page where's your head and she calls Q Branch, whatever. I thought you'd be worried about James or whatever. Yeah, I mean, she was already a wishy washy money penny, and now she just has the they most lackluster. Totally scene. neutralized. Her. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of the ending of the film? The way it kind of all wrapped up. Um, well, I, for the most part, you know, when you mentioned before about the action scenes in this film, and I know John Glenn, I think he thinks this is one of the greatest things he's ever filmed, that truck chase. I never really understood why that was. <laughs> I never. Got it. Yeah. I, I just felt like it's just With there. a rocket launcher and it kind of flips on its side. And yeah, it's just, right. I mean, it's yeah. like they're trying to do... And I appreciate the fact that these stunts are kind of real. Like, I yeah. mean, they, they're pretty authentic stunts. But it just had that gimmicky kind of a feel to it where it's like, well, what can we do right. that's that's kind of quirky and gimmicky? And how, how can we blow up all the trucks and stuff? Okay. I never thought that was really any good. Mm -hmm. um, but... I do like the poetry of Bond taking out the lighter at the last second. Yes. With the inscription and yeah. sets him on fire. Yeah. yeah. That was very good. I like that too. That it's it's interesting. That scene ends very quickly for me. Like all of a sudden, like Bond's right. stumbling. Yes, and yes. then you go boom. And yeah. it's like, that's it. Yeah. And it's like it's abrupt. It, it does seem all of it, e even the, the, the line delivery 
is yeah. oddly cut, and then he lights yeah. him on fire, and then it's like cut, 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 and he's already 50 feet away, which I guess was a tricky thing to film, so you had to maybe cover some tracks here yeah, and there. Yeah, it's editing. Yeah, but even the part that, you know, don't you want to know why, and it's almost like the camera's always sort of looking in the wrong place at every time, and then he hits the button and, yeah. and runs. That's a good point. Yeah, I, so, but but again, I like I like the poetry of the, the idea of it. All right. Joe Darlington. <laughs> you, get, you get to go first, you bookend it. Um, <laughs> Out of the two, two whopping, two whopping Timothy Dalton movies, yeah. is License to Kill his worst one? Uh, License to Kill is definitely his worst one. Uh, and oddly enough, it's funny because again, I like The Living Daylights so much. Yeah. And then to totally just flip it over and do something so wildly different with this. Oh boy, it hurts it, again and again. It's not even that it's it's not even just that it's about drug dealers and kind of '80s action cliches and and Miami Vice and etc. But but even just the, the production value is weak. Uh, there's some one when the ninjas show up. You watch the scene with the ninjas. There's a sound effect of somebody somebody in the background going. And it's like, wait, what did I just me. hear? There's, there's literally somebody kind of making mouth noises yeah. to, to to do the, the the effects, and it's like, wow, is this lazy? And there's there's a couple things in in here that again, production wise, just seems so clunky and uninspired. So again, I, so I you're really have there's a, a chance. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I can't muster any energy for this one at all. He's really sugarcoating this, folks. Um, but I know I'm, I'm, I'm in the minority, by the way. I know a lot of people really no, do like it. I, to me, this is his worst. Um, I yes, I mean, because I, I Living Daylights, I think is a great film. Mm. I really do with it with a great bond in it. So License to Kill, although I found redeeming moments and it held up better for me, mm. it still is not um, surpass yeah. Living Daylights. It mm. can't. Yeah. Um, but you know, for me, it's not. It used to be in like the the bottom. I would say twenty percent of the Bond films. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think it's it's gotten somewhere. I have a little tiny heart for it, but uh, there's just things that are like very wincing. Anyway, <laughs> uh, well, we we've we're we're getting closer to the to the top, but we have one more stop before we get to the top, mm -hmm. and that is we've got to go visit our good old friend Pierce Brosnan. We sure do. Right? Die another day. We've got to head to die another day. We are. Get, okay. get, get a, Get Another it. one that is going to inspire a lot of controversy, well, probably not controversy, Ooh. but some, Could some our feelings. theory be holding up on this one? <laughs> uh, you, you, will, you will be able to tell, I'm sure. No filter. So this has been David Zaritsky. And Joe Darlington. We'll see you real soon. See you next time.